Hello everyone, welcome to class series and in this video, we're gonna be learning our short summary of our chapter, Jamaican Fragment. This story, Jamaican Fragment, brings out the prejudice that almost every person suffers from when it comes to the denomination issues like color, caste and class. A. L. Hendricks is a West Indian writer. He described his experience and learnings from the incident of two boys playing master and servant. The writer daily walks a half mile from his home to the railway station and returns in the evening. The walk was very pleasant for him because of the good surroundings. Walking was a good experience for him because he learned something from a little incident. One morning, he noticed two boys playing in the garden of a modest cottage. One was a strong black boy, about 5 years old and another was a white boy about 4 years old. Both were dressed in blue shirts and khaki pants. The little white boy commanded his bigger playmate. The white boy ordered the black boy to pick up a stick, jump into the flowers, get some water, etc. The black boy followed his orders very faithfully. The writer was amazed and puzzled. He asked himself who they were and whether the little boy was the son of a house servant. He misinterpreted that the dark boy might be neighbor's child, but he wondered how it was that the black boy obeyed so faithfully the smaller white boy's order. A number of questions arise in the mind of the writer, whether the black boy sensed that in his own country he would be at the white man's back and call or whether blacks were inferior to whites as a race so inferior that even in the infancy the blacks realized their deficiencies and accepted as a position as the white man's servant these questions arise in his mind but cannot find any answer the whole day he went on asking these questions on himself for a day his faith in his people was shaken when he passed by the same place in the afternoon the little boys were not there the next morning, the boys were there again. A man was standing at the gate watching them. To his surprise, the dark boy was commanding, while the little white youngster did everything he was told to do. The writer understood that it was really a game, a game that he too had played as a boy. Each boy took by turns every alternate day to be the boss, the other as the slave. He looked at the man standing by the gate. The writer thought that the white man was wondering if the black race was superior to the white. He laughed at himself and how the silly grown-ups were to be misinterpret a child's action. Perhaps the white man thought that blacks would rule over the white in the end. The writer tried to clarify and drive away all the doubts from his mind. He told the white man that he may be thinking the blacks would rule over the whites. He told him not to have such wrong notions because that was only a game. The white man was surprised at his outburst. He told the writer that he knew all about the game because the boys were brothers and his sons. He pointed to the fair brown woman and said that she was his wife. The writer smiled and felt proud of his country and his people and moved to catch his train.